Today I'm going to share an experimental project that I have working on to look at the scheduling of jobs on the Summit Supercomputer. This diagram is a picture of the job step viewer that we've built at Oak Ridge Leadership Computing Facility. Here there's um, a layout of the floor plan of where all the nodes are in the supercomputer are sitting. There's about 4,600 nodes. Each node has six NVIDIA V100 GPUs. And so this is a very heavy lifting, uh, large computational piece of machinery. There are lots and lots of jobs that sit in the queue and wait to be scheduled and run every day. Usually uh, there's frustration as users kind of send a job in, wait hours and hours and try and figure out, you know, when is the job going to run? How much time is it going to sit in the queue? Should I make the job larger or smaller? And so what I want to try out today is to build a small playable game where we can schedule the jobs ourselves. We'll have something like um, we'll have something like each job dropping down the the top of a screen like Space Invaders, and we'll try and have the um, the user able to pick which one of those jobs that they want to run at a given time. This kind of playable game will give us a nice interface and feel for what the scheduler looks like. Um, and so without further ado, let me uh, jump into the technology that's going to make this happen. Uh, I'm going to base this game on the Gymnasium Python library. Now this Python library is great because it provides pretty much all of the um, boilerplate and background code that you need if you're building a game. So you can focus on exactly what is the, um, what is the space of things that, look, that sit on the board, what does the board look like, um, what kind of actions can the user take? And so in this example, they're giving us nice example code that imports their gymnasium library, then runs the uh, gym.make function to make an environment containing this game. And um, inside of that, you can make a game event loop. They'll make 1,000 steps of the game with sampling a random action from the game's action space. And then um, running one environmental step with that action they get some results from the environmental step, and then finally close. And so if we were to run this, we would see um, a random action being chosen at every point in time for the cart pull game. Let me go through the basics of how to get up and running. You can see I've got the, uh, the terminal sitting over here. This terminal will uh, be where we'll install and start to run this code. Now, before I get started, um, Gymnasium isn't just gonna work out of the box on um, OS X Max. If I type in Python, nothing happens. Um, in, a, in a Mac OS X uh, latest version, Python is actually deprecated because you have to either pick Python 2 or Python 3, and it looks like they've finally gotten rid of Python 2. Um, so if you just open up um, OS X in terminal and you type Python 3, you should get something like this. And if I type these commands in, it's not going to work. This is called the import test. And of course, um, gymnasium isn't found. It doesn't matter if I recall it, if I rename it as gym or not, still not gonna find the module. In order for this to actually happen, um, in order to get through and actually start uh, iterating on this development code, what we'll need to do is install a Python virtual environment. Now, the latest installation of um, the packaging tool that we're gonna use is called Poetry. So let's just pull up the documentation. Um, if I wanted to install Poetry, this latest version gives us some documentation that says, in order to install it on OS X, you can use uh, pip x, or you can use the official installer, or you can install it manually. I would like to use the manual version because I don't want to deal with pip x, which is kind of a new iteration of pip, and I like the idea of using a virtual environment. What this virtual environment does is it puts all of the um, files associated with your development inside a directory of your choosing. I'm going to call this virtual environment the end. When I run this command, Python is now creating a new VN inside of the VM directory. And if you look at it, you can see that inside here they've built a bin and a lib that includes all the Python site packages, etc. So VM is basically like a, a slash user. And inside the bin, there's an activate function, which will activate this virtual environment. 
in order to um, actually do the activation, you can either run this activate inside of a bash shell, uh, or you can just manually set the environment variables. So I'm going to set um, virtual and is users demo bn. Usually you would have to put export in front of these two, but because I'm using a different shell, I don't have to use export. And I'll put this virtual environment in front of my path so that the Python and the pip that are defined inside this virtual environment will be run before the Python and the pip that are bundled with uh, Mac OS X. So now my path contains the path to this virtual environment plus my original path. I can echo that and make sure that it's set. Great. So now I should be able to triple check. This is an important step to make sure that I'm not going to run pip and install somewhere else. If I use this virtual environment pip, this pip will install packages into the virtual environment. With that virtual environment set up and activated, I've got the virtual environment in order to activate it, right, I had to set the virtual underscore end environment variable and add it to my path. Now that it's there, I can do this install process where I'm using pip install. They want to update pip and setup tools. Doesn't seem like a bad idea, um, although it should be relatively recent because I just installed it. And again, I don't have to um, I don't have to use the entire path to pip because I know that I already put the virtual environment into my path. And now I'm going to install Poetry. Pip is a tool that takes packages from the Python package indexes and installs them locally so that I can run them with my Python code. Poetry is a tool that allows you to add packages to a program that you're developing. So now that I have Poetry, I can run poetry dash dash help. Uh, now this poetry is actually existing inside my VN bin directory. So all those install commands that I just added, added a bunch of stuff and poetry's up here. Now let's see, we have poetry gives us a bunch of different um, commands that we can run. And the one that we're looking for to start a new project, we could read through the documentation and find um, and look through, you know, kind of follow the poetry tutorial on starting a new project, or we can just try list all commands. And the lucky winner for creating a new project is in it, in the current directory, or new. All right, poetry, new, job game. All right, so we've created this new package called job game and sitting inside of here, you can see that they've added some boilerplates. The um, readme.markdown, markdown, a job game directory inside of job game to make a uh, little bit of a stutter job game slash job game with an init.py, pyproject.toml and tests. The pyproject.toml contains poetry specific information um, that pip can understand when it's trying to install this package. And this information was automatically populated because I have a git config. And so if you look at git config, you can find information on how to set up your, uh, your own username and email inside of git. All right, looks like I have a readme, but it's blank. And I also have some tests that contain just um, an init with nothing in them. All right, so this is a nice blank slate where I can start building my game from. Um, I'm gonna write some documentation. Let's see, so this will be a um, game to manually scheduled jobs on a supercomputer.
What else do we want to say? Jobs fall from the top. Uh, drop them. Drop them onto the machine before they uh, reach the player. Great. So that's pretty much the basic idea that we'll start with. It's always good to start with some documentation. I do not have a git repository yet, so I'm going to start right away with git init. Um, that creates a .git directory inside my job game Python package directory. And now I can use git add dot. Um, I also happen to know that Python creates a bunch of directories called underscore underscore pycache. So I'm going to put pycache into the git ignore file, uh, this new git ignore file. will. Um, prevent those cache files from being added to their version control. All right, so now the only git commands I've used, okay, git status didn't work because there was no git repository yet. Um, git init creates a new repository. Git add adds um, a bunch of files into my repository. And I just added this one because it wasn't there when I ran the git add at first. Git status will now show me what I have in my, um, in my working space. All of these files are new. They've been created by Poetry, and I'm going to take them and put them into version control with git commit dash m blank project. Let's just call it new. You have the option at this point to name your branch. So I'm going to call my branch main, and I am going to run git log just to see where I'm sitting with git. The history is I've created one new project with one commit. This hash points at the, uh, the current state of all of my files. And I have that as the head of the repository. So that's exactly where I'm kind of sitting if I type ls. And that's pointing to main. Main is the, um, is the branch that I'm developing on. So we'll start by developing on main. Um, it's good practice to actually have side branches, but I'm going to develop on main to begin with because this is a new project. Now this thing doesn't do anything particularly interesting. So what I want to do is start adding a whole bunch of packages in here. Um, something that is really good to keep in mind for modern Python is to add um, packages with poetry add dash D. Um, dash D is for development. Development, you want to use the packages mypy for Python type checking, which is wonderful because it can catch errors before you have to actually you know, run the function and discover it at runtime. And I also want to add PyTest because PyTest is uh, what's going to help run all the tests. So right now, I'm, I'm just adding some basic tests. And with tests, I can make something called um, test import. This test import will have the job of just um, importing. All right, I called my package job game, so I should be able to import job game. Let's run PyTest. This happens to work for me, but it actually shouldn't because what I should be doing is poetry run PyTest. Why do I want to use poetry run PyTest? That's because when poetry run PyTest is, poetry run is a, um, a wrapper for running the command over here. So Poetry Run is actually going to start up a new environment that contains all of the stuff that the job game requires. So all of the libraries and, and components that I've added with Poetry Add. And then Poetry Run, Run will run inside that environment. So I want to run PyTest inside the environment that contains all the stuff that job game needs. Otherwise, the tests aren't going to see what the actual run condition looks like. Looks like um, I'm getting a error immediately because the very first thing that I added from job game import all was uh, not good. Python doesn't like to import all inside of a function. So I'll just make this a named import. So it's not just all names, but uh, job game directly. 
try this. This one seems to pass, so whatever job game is, I can import it and run it inside of test import. Let's see if this works. All right, so job game has no attribute version. So let's put that inside of the init file. Now we have a version defined. Um, let's look at all the files inside of job game just to see that nothing else is in there. Yep, the only thing inside of job game is the init file and it just contains the one line that I put in. WC counts the words in all the files. And here's again that PyCache that I told you about. And if I look at what's happened inside of git status, you'll notice that um, poetry.lock is not a tracked file. That's because poetry hadn't been run the last time I checked files with git. Um, also, pyproject.toml has been updated because poetry added some packages for development. This I just changed, and this is new. So I'm going to use git add check my lock file into version control as well as my test. Now you notice we have these two new files, but these aren't staged to do commit. So I can add them manually, or I can just do commit a, which will add those two files. So here's the changes which are staged to be committed. I should at this point make a good description. So I'll write something like um, added simple import test and dev dependencies. Great. So far, so good. Now we're actually ready to go and run this. Um, so that was all boilerplate. And now we're actually ready to go ahead and run the steps that are listed inside of the tutorial. If you look, um, they want to import Gymnasium as Jim. And if Gymnasium is a nicely named package, then I should be able to add it this way um, to my development environment because I'm developing with poetry. I use poetry add. Looks like Gymnasium is a nicely named package. Usually it's good to go ahead and verify that that's the case, but in, in our case, we know it works. It's added NumPy, which is a nice um, matrix and linear algebra um, package for working with arrays inside of Python. And here I have Gymnasium. It's Let's just run it and see what happens. So to run this, uh, This is example code, but we'll, I will eventually want to run this code inside of the uh, file that runs the game. So for now, my first test development iteration is just going to run a example game. And I should be able to run this if I use poetry to run it inside the poetry environment. What's happening now is that source file is being executed, which loads all of the stuff inside Gymnasium. So Gymnasium is, is pre-compiling and checking. It looks like something happened, but it didn't show anything on the screen. So we probably didn't ask it to render anything. We can actually check that something is happening, though, by printing out some of these actions, or printing out maybe the uh, observations or rewards. Let's print them all. And we'll make this about 30, uh, 20 iterations so it doesn't fill up too much of my screen. Yep. So it did run those 20 iterations and it's printing out the observation. Uh, the action that was taken randomly from the action space, probably left or right for a cart pull game, and the observation that the that the player has or the AI has in order to decide what action to take next, plus the reward for how well um, the game is doing. Looks like the reward is continuously won, and the game is observing all of these different things. They're probably components of uh, positions and velocities. 
So um, if I were to play this as a human, this would kind of not be visual and be very difficult for me to work with. But as a computer, these four numbers would be perfect for running through an AI ML model to try and predict whether I should take action zero or action one. So you can see where we're going with this game. Um, I've gone through the basics of setting up a Python environment and running the example code that sits inside Gymnasium. The next steps that we'll have, uh, probably make another video about these, are how to um, how to start tweaking this game and modifying it so that we can have it represent the environment of a supercomputer with all of the jobs that are being looked at inside the job queue. Um, and then we'll, we'll kind of interactively play that. Uh, we'll show you the playable version of the game and um, finish off with teaching the AI to achieve the high score.